Hi, and welcome to my studio. It's Dina Tollefson, and you're watching Lily Tranquility. Today's going to be a great one. I'm going to show you uh, some tips on how to select uh, the right size paintbrush and the right size palette knives for the painting that you're working on. And I'm going to be demonstrating for you this new painting uh, from my pond series. It's a 30 inch by 40 inch acrylic painting and I'm painting it for uh, Canyon Road Contemporary Art, the wonderful gallery that represents my originals in Santa Fe, New Mexico. So if you're like me, you like to sometimes work on smaller pieces of art or sometimes larger pieces and getting your paintbrushes the right size is really important. So you can see here, I'm, um, I've got a start on my painting and I'm working with a large wash brush. So this is a, um, a one inch wash from American Painter and I'm just getting that acrylic paint, uh, starting to get that onto the canvas. Alright, so now coming in with a very large round brush, I'm choosing this round brush uh, because of the, I'm looking to create some lyrical motion um, with the brush and by choosing a round brush, um, I actually don't have as much control as I would with a flat wash brush and I like that effect. I like that loose and interpretive effect. So this uh, color that you see, I mixed using phthalo blue red shade and pyrrole orange. Added a little pyrrole orange to make the color not quite as bright, a little bit, um, a little bit more nuanced. There we go. I'm also, um, when I'm putting the strokes of paint on, I'm trying to avoid um, the what we call petting the canvas or licking the canvas. I'm trying to put the paint down once and then walk away. So trying to do one stroke and then and then um, go walk away from it to keep the energy in the painting and to keep the feeling of um, freshness to the work. Also varying the direction and size of the strokes. Coming back in, making sure to get enough paint on the brush. Um, sometimes you want a lot of paint on your brush and sometimes you want to just have it be kind of, um, kind of just a small amount, like a dry brushing technique. So what I'll do is I'll usually put the paint on first where I want it super thick. Then I'll go back to the areas, the passages where I want it to be kind of thinner and, uh, and then go in and just kind of scrub with the brush and a dry brush technique. So just establishing the edge of the petals of the lily. And now with a little bit more of a dryer brush, going in and see you can get, um, when you're painting, if you just put a small amount of paint on your brush, then you get these kind of softer effects. So here are the paints that I'm using, and I recommend, I'm using Golden, I like that brand a lot. There are a lot of good brands out there. Um, I've got, uh, you can see the spoons and the palette knives I'll be using later for the technique, the Taoism technique, and then these very large brushes. So on this 30 by 40 canvas, I want to use um, large brushes. If I were to use tiny little brushes, uh, my work would not feel as strong, and it would also, um, it would also, I guess, have more of a, a fussy effect. I'm looking to get a non-fussy effect, if you know, I guess you know what I mean. There's like, you know that feeling where you have like a fussiness or a, uh, it's like contrived. I'm, I'm working to get a feeling uh, that it's just kind of fresh and spontaneous. So this underpainting I'm doing here, you can see that the canvas is originally toned. I, I took fluid acrylic, um, it was a golden fluid, fluid acrylic, and then used a two inch and a three inch painting brush. Uh, I was just a house painting brush from Purdy and brushed all across the canvas and let that dry. And then now, um, then I'm going in and laying in an underpainting that's going to be the basis for the Taoism technique. You can see what a very large brush I'm using. I'm going in still with that very large round and um, 
just allowing the paint to go up around the lily pads and the flowers, the buds. And once I've put the paint on, I try not to go back over that same painted area. Now that the paint's off, we can do a little dry brushing here. And this kind of purple color that you see uh, is ultramarine blue with a, a little bit of diaxazine blue and a small amount of pyrrole orange. The addition of the orange will bring the color saturation down and make it uh, again more nuanced. All right, so let's come in here with some phthalo blue red shade and yellow ochre and a little bit of titanium white. Again, this very large brush, just going up and touching the tops of the flower, trying to use as few strokes as possible to describe the work. And I'll uh, leave a link uh, in the description, but if you need any uh, paint brushes or paints or canvas, any of the supplies I'm using, I'm an Amazon influencer, so I have a, which means that um, I have a list of uh, recommended products, and if you end up buying one of those products, it's of no additional cost to you, but um, but I get a, uh, I get a stipend from, um, or I, I get a fee from, Amazon when you purchase that but it's just a, uh, a way for me to let you know you know what products I endorse I think are good uh, the kind of products that I use I'm a professional painter out of Cedar Rapids Iowa and so this is my full-time job I paint and then um, galleries across the US um, uh, represent my originals and then I also have prints if you're looking for any information on uh, getting into the print market or getting into licensing I've got a couple of videos that may be helpful to you. Also, I've got some videos on um, how to get into an art gallery that if you're looking for um, art gallery representation may be helpful. And say hi to Grosje and Romeo, my little cockatiels. When they say hello. So um, what I'm doing now is I allow the uh, underpainting to dry completely. And now coming in with thick daubs of paint and a technique called daubism. So I'm using uh, palette knives and spoons to get this textural effect and just building up the layer after layer. And uh, what I'm aiming for is a uh, kind of a, a mix between or a hybrid between low relief sculpture and whoops, I made a little mistake here. Let me come in and show you how I do this. I can come in with the Q-tips. Now that the layers below are dry, I can go in with a Q-tip and take off the paint where I made a mistake. And just a Q-tip dabbed in a little bit of water. And I can go in and clean that area back up. There we go. But if you ever have that happen on your canvas where you get a mark where you don't want it, um, you can just go in uh, carefully with uh, like a little Q-tip, a little cotton swab dipped in water and get that wiped right back out. So now using this very thin tool, I'm uh, laying in the effect of foliage and I'm uh, thinking about the direction when I'm putting the strokes on. I'm thinking about the direction of the strokes. I'm looking here in my painting, I'm aiming for a variety of directions and a sense of movement with the strokes and with the color placement. So when you're doing your own paintings, you'll have a feel for, uh, in your artwork, um, how much directionality, how much, uh, what kind of sense of movement. Uh, if you put everything, for example, horizontally, then you're going to get a, a feeling of tranquility or calmness. If you uh, put things in a sense of motion, have some things vertical, some things horizontal, some things diagonal, it will animate your painting. So it just depends on uh, what you're looking to get in your work. So now coming in with the spoon. The spoon can give an effect that palette knives, um, I have a hard time getting with palette knives. I like the effect of the spoon 
it uh, makes these wonderful kind of luscious forms and you'll see that the spoon I'm using here is a very large this is a um, like a vegetable serving spoon and I have two size spoons I have this larger size um, that I use on large paintings and then I have a smaller teaspoon size and both spoons are reserved only for painting that's a note if you ever use a uh, eating utensil for painting you want to make sure you don't ever use it for eating again just save that aside for painting just for safety purposes you don't want to put that uh, paint into your body all right so now just uh, I'm also thinking here about balancing the energy across the painting and by balancing the energy I mean that I'm um, trying to get it so that you could turn the canvas in any direction and still get a feeling of uh, boldness and energy no matter how you're rotating the canvas to try and have all quadrants have a similar feeling of balance so this color here is just um, black Mars black and titanium white and I am uh, working to add a lot of neutrals into the painting so you can see I've got some bright colors here and in order to balance those brights I'm putting in a lot of neutrals like uh, if you think about if you put an outfit together you might have khaki pants or khaki skirt khaki jacket with a brightly colored shirt it's that kind of idea you don't want to be head to toe shirt pants and shoes all in one you know all in super bright colors you usually like to add a little bit of neutral it's that same principle here by putting neutral colors in next to brights um, then that can make the bright colors really sing and then the painting will feel um, more balanced so letting uh, the paints dry in between now coming back in with more neutrals and I'm using a smaller knife I'm trying to get a feeling of um, larger dabs of paint, smaller dabs of paint to get the feeling of uh, what it's really like inside the pond where the their animals and their sunlight and their plants growing, insects and a lot of sounds and excitement. So this gray blue color you see here is a combination of uh, Mars black, titanium white, and a small amount of phthalo blue red shade. I'm going to uh, take that color and kind of repeat it all over on the canvas, this uh, neutral color, uh, again thinking about balance. Now adding some titanium white to that color it can make a lighter, brighter version, and that will be up in the area with light. Now here close up you can see I've got uh, just this is just yellow ochre yellow ochre is a wonderful balanced neutral you can make your own yellow ochre or you can bite it out of the tube or you can make a version of it by taking a primary yellow and a dioxazine purple a tiny amount of dioxazine purple and uh, so yellow and purple are opposites on the color wheel and that's why a yellow ochre would be considered a neutral some more of this very light gray adding in some olive green and the olive green I uh, mixed with uh, Mars black and a little bit of or a little bit of Mars black and a lot of primary yellow just thinking about balancing all those neutrals with the bright colors there we go well, thank you so much for visiting me today, and I hope to see you again soon. And until next time, this is Dina Tollefson, and all my best to you. Bye-bye.